Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from the comic shop again this week. It was a pretty big week for me. I got nine comics. Um, one of them that was shorted came in, and I got a number one. So those were two extra for the week. Uh, and Cerebus in Hell came out, which I think was supposed to be out last week, or at least on Dave Sims' video he said it was, but it wasn't according to my comic shop, so... But um, Cerebus in Hell, issue number three of four. Uh, this is filled with uh, Cerebus strips, or Dave Sims, since he can't draw anymore, mixes paste-ups of Cerebus in with old old prints from last, from the, I don't know, 17th, 18th, 19th century. It, it's, I must say, I, I, I had my doubts about this when I first picked it up, but this series has been very, very funny. I've enjoyed it a whole lot, and what's weird about this one, it's got the wrong price on it. $5, it's actually $4, and in his, Dave Sim has a weekly YouTube show, even though he's not into technology at all, where he said it was a mistake. And it's funny, I don't know how that mistake got through, because you can see, since issue zero, they've had this ad on the back, and the ad has had $5 prices on those two, and four dollar prices on these ones. So I, I remember when I, I was like, "Why is the price going up in the ads?" And it turned out it was a mistake, and no one noticed it. Uh, he said they were supposed to be in plastic bags with the real price on them, but mine wasn't at my shop, so it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, I think he said it was going to cost him a fortune to get the plastic bags on too. I, I, the UPC rings up as four dollars, so that's all you really need. But anyway, Sarah is now good Here stuff. Here we go with The Walking Dead issue 167, and I just picked this up and it's real thick. Are there any ads or something? No, it's all Walking Dead. Still 3.99. That's I think that's a I think that's a 40 pager there. I don't know why it's extra big and thick, but uh, we all know The Walking Dead. If you don't know what The Walking Dead is, if you're not reading it, you at least know what the heck it is, because uh, it's got a rather famous TV show. But the last issue, last issue, last issue ended with a big whoopsie. Um, I won't spoil it for you if you haven't read it yet, but uh, a big whoopsie and a big reveal, you know. All sorts of fun, way, and you can tell there's some sadness going on there. That's part of the big uh, thing that happened a couple issues ago. But, you know, Walking Dead's good stuff. If if you're not reading it, uh, why not? It's good stuff. And next we've got Planetoid Praxis, issue number four. I think this is four of five. I, don't, I think I remember reading I, I couldn't. I was looking in the front page here, and it, they started the story, so it didn't, uh, didn't tell us this issue. And it's also a flip book. Well, a little other things story in the back, which is uh, just a little four, six, eight pager, whatever it is. Uh, the main story is about life on this uh, um, harsh uh, planetoid they've been living on, but now civilization has just come to them. I think that's what this cover is showing us. And the the natives there, who are from all over the known galaxy, who have kind of made a life for themselves on this uh, abandoned planetoid which they crashed on over many many years many many different groups but now that's all over the big war that was going on has now been settled and they're part of some other planet some other you know multi-planet government and so it's them dealing with that uh, pretty interesting stuff i enjoyed the first planetoid mini which came out three four years ago and this one's good too and now we've got Paper Girls number 14. Wow, I just noticed they made those three little things blurry, and I've just made my eyes blurry, because everything else is about clear. I guess that's to give her a sense of taking off. They blurred the little boxes there. Let's see it wrap around. I must say I'm I'm liking these. I'm liking these this new set of Paper Girls covers rather than the, the ones they had for the first, I don't know how many issues, six, eight. I'm I'm much I'm liking these much more. I'm liking the colors, the illustration. But it's been a good story. Uh, a lot of fun. Our our uh, paper girls are wandering around time. Now they've got a new paper girl. <laughs> she's for, she's a Neolithic uh, cave woman, I guess you'd say. They're back in time and they're a little time traveling adventure. Oh, I guess they got some saber tooth cats. 
Uh, all sorts of nuttiness going on. Up, oh, some cavemen have captured one of the space people. Uh, very hard to describe what's going on in this book because it's nutty. But it's a lot of fun. Check it out sometime. And issue number 27 of Outcast is out. Man, this thing has uh, come out pretty much like clockwork uh, over the last few years. Um, I think they've had a break here and there maybe, but 27 issues. Uh, a new way, I guess. That this is um, it's our lead character who's been in all 27 issues, and he just ran into his dad, who he's never met, who has some of his powers to fight these weird demons, but he doesn't quite know what's going on either. But I'm guessing he's now playing the... Uh, the role of the sort of guy who knows something about what's going on. There's the uh, reverend, who's his partner. In, his partner in demon fighting, that is. Oh, look at that. I guess we're going to get some sort of history of the demons this issue. Practice fighting. But yeah, I guess we're finally going to get some sort of explanation for this. Uh, it's, like I said, it's been for the first 25 issues, it was just the, the two lead characters kind of fuddling around in the dark trying to figure out what the heck was going on with these demons. And one thing noteworthy of it was there was no sort of wise wizard character who had who could tell them what was going on. Seems we're, we're taking a turn that way. We've now got the wise wizard character. But like I said, I'm, I'm not caught up in the TV show, but I'll have to check it out again sometime. But Outcast has been good. And here we go with Manifest Destiny, issue number 28. Another one that's been chugging along for a while now. I've got, a, I got quite a few comics up around, up, up around the late 20s and early 30s these days. And I think they're all from Image. Um, I think this one... Did this one start before Outcast? It may have. Nice artwork. The Wild Frontier. All sorts of crazy visions they're having because the... The crazy vision vision fog has crept over their fort. And now they're all seeing things and wanting to kill each other. I believe those are a couple of ghosts there. And they see monsters that aren't real. And we have to fe- they we have to see if they can make it out of this crazy fog. They're they're hunkered down for the winter. They thought they were safe. And then the fog that makes that makes monsters came by. Good stuff. And here's issue number one of Bane Conquest, which I didn't buy for me at all. Bought for a friend of mine who wanted it because he wanted to see the um, Graham Nolan art, uh, da, da, which looks pretty nice. I think he. I just read. Um, I'm reading an old Batman omnibus, and I read the very first Bane story, which I think Graham Nolan, maybe uh, Graham Nolan drew, and I think Chuck Dixon wrote it. But that was a really good story. That first one-shot Bane story. Can't say as much for the rest of the book. That has that whole series in it, but I'll have to show you that sometime. But that first Bane st- stupid. See, I'm not used to books with ads in them in the middle of them anymore. Shown some shown off ads. No wonder I don't like Marvel and DC comics throwing ads in the middle of my story. That is a wacky cover. That is one bloated Bane. I guess he's all juiced up and his muscles bulging out of their rightful place. But anyway, figured I'd give you a look at that one. And here's the shorted book, Dark Horse Presents. I just- I guess I really only got eight comics since Bane isn't mine. Didn't think of that when I counted them. Too much coffee, man. Who else do we got? You, who's in here? Too much coffee, man. Trekker. Oh, is that some Ron Rand? Ron Randall doing that in the first Dark Horse Presents. Brooklyn Blood. That's been going on for 16 chapters. There's a gorilla on the cover. Savant. Oh, and some more Finder. Chase the Lady, chapter 16. That's been going on for a while. I'll buy the Finder, though. They'll they'll um, collect it all in probably one of those smaller books that they do, Dark Horse, because that's how the other finders have come out. Uh, huh. They made gorilla checks. I guess that's a reference to uh, gorillas on the cover in the 60s selling better, someone at DC said. I forget who. Oh, it's got gorilla checks. Oh, I guess it's a, a series of covers. Oh, that's kind of interesting. The story told in a series of gorilla covers. We'll have to check that out. But anyway... I should have had this two weeks ago, but Diamond didn't see fit to send one to my comic shop, so here it is two weeks later. Here's the first issue that I got uh, this week, which I somehow missed. I read it was coming out, but I just didn't keep track of it, and then I saw it on the shelf. I'd already paid for my other comics, and I looked over on the shelf, and I said, 
Hey, that's uh, Sarah Vaughn and Jonathan Luna, the same two who did Alex and Ada. So I'm like, you know what? That's an automatic pull for me. Um, if I'd been watching closely, I could have put this on my list earlier. But, you know, put it on my, I, I said I'm buying this issue and just put it on my pull list. I have no idea what it's about. But I liked Alex and Ada. I generally liked all the Luna Brothers stuff before... Uh, which one is it? Jonathan started doing stuff with Sarah Vaughn. So, um, hey, I'm going to give this one a read. Who knows how many issues it is? 12, 24, something, somewhere around there, I would guess. But uh, I'll give it a read and uh, let you know how it is, even though it's on my pull list. So that's how it is. It's good. Finally, we'll give you a look at my background art. I think I showed these two in black and white last week, but uh, here's the color on them. We have Dreams of Things 40 and 42, 40 and 42. That's when we got lots of staring eyes coming at you. And some sort of weird rocket hat. With my strange sky technique in the background, lines on his face. And this one. Oh, look at that. We got, we got the other one behind it, colored. I didn't even realize that was there. Um colored nice nice red and this one's got uh, some oranges pinks purples another eye staring at you lots of eyes staring at you I'll, I can one of my uh, professors said back in art school that uh, sometimes my work is looking harder at the at the viewer than the viewer is looking at the work and all these years later that's still the same I make stuff that stares at you but there you go a little bit of a look, and you guys all have a good week out there.